Good evening from the Southeast Asia, uh, my excellencies and colleagues. Good morning and afternoon to those from other part of the world. Um, welcome to the site event, uh, upholding the Oslo Action Plan in times of COVID-19, a discussion on race education. Um, Thank you to the organizer of the intercessionals for allowing this event to happen. And thank you also for joining us today. Um, this site event is inspired by three webinars on explosive ordnance risk education, EORE, that were organized by EORE Advisory Group in April, uh, ASEAN Regional Mine Action Center, RMAC, in May, and lastly by Mine Action and Child Protection Areas of Responsibility, together with the Global Education and Protection Clusters in June. Um, we are convinced that these concerted efforts uh, will help the national authorities and partners implementing Oslo Action Plan, and particularly Action Points 28 to 32, efficiently and effectively in the time of COVID pandemic. Um, I think before um, I go to the next part, I'll probably just going to give you a bit of brief on the practical and technical information. Um, this event is being recorded and we will make available online after the event. Uh, please keep your microphone muted at all times unless you are called on to speak and we will manually mute participants when needed. Um, there will also be some opportunities to ask questions in the end of the presentation. So when this happens, you can raise your virtual hand to indicate that you would like to speak and wait for one of uh, us to call on you. So I guess to find the raise hand button, you may click on participants, then at the bottom of the participants window, you will see the option to raise your hand. Um, alternatively, you may put your question in the chat box, which we will be monitoring for questions. And due to limited time, we may not be able to answer all of the questions, but we will follow up after the side event uh, to the respective speakers. So please keep your questions short as well. Uh, later, we will have a breakout group discussion and we will have some opportunity to raise the points in the group as well. So, um, I think as mentioned in the flyer as well, excellencies and colleagues, the objective of the site event is basically to share the national authorities and partners experiences and challenges implementing their risk education programs with reference to Oslo Action Plan number 28 to 32 um, during this pandemic, which also ensuring do no harm. Um, this event will be co-hosted by Ux Lorong, uh, Child Protection Specialist of UNICEF joining us from New York and me, Dwi Prameswari from RMAC. Um, we will have three presenters. Mr. Dara Seng uh, is still trying to join us. Um, a Deputy Director of Public Relations Department, Cambodia Mine Action and Victim Assistance Authority, CMA. And from Thailand, we have Flight Lieutenant Chutipon An Ukun Panik, the Interpreter and Coordinator of Special Affairs Division, and last but not least, we have a presenter from Libyan Mine Action Center, Mr. Khalid uh, Gabriel Alwa Dawi, Head of Mine Risk Education Department. Um, I mentioned briefly about the webinar that previously was organized, um, excellencies and colleagues. Uh, let me just give you a bit of brief that we did identify on some consequences in implementing EORE in the time of pandemic. First, that we have many EORE deliveries were suspended um, during this period of March to May. And there are also risk of spreading COVID-19 during face-to-face -face EORE activities. Therefore, national authorities and operators, they have considered to conduct innovative ways of EORE to um, TV and radio broadcasts, as well as social media. They have already also implemented the safety protocols um, to both operators and communities in face-to-face -face EORE sessions. So by applying temperature check, for example, social physical distancing, wearing masks, and so on. So forth. Uh, in Thailand, we heard 
an integration of EOR in COVID-19 risk education delivery through village health volunteers. Um, our colleague, Lieutenant Chutipon, will elaborate on that. And I think on the information and education communication printed materials um, that is also often used in EORE shall also be reconsidered again. And um, we may also refer to the guidelines from risk communication and community engagement partners to ensure the, the safety. And last but not least, we have from Lao PDR sharing that their community-based risk management can also be done by relying on the focal points and channels of communication. Um, however, in this side event, we will elaborate more on how this has been done, uh, if anything been addressed, and we can also hear the perspective from Libya as well. Now, um, as the core of this site event, uh, in Oslo Action Plan, uh, there are five action points, as you, have, as you are um, aware of already, that we should refer to. So we have the Action 28 on integrating MRE activities with wider efforts um, on humanitarian development, protection and education. Um, we have also Action 29 on providing context-specific MRE to affected population and groups at risk, considering gender, age, disability, sensitive risk education as well. We have Action 30 on prioritizing people most at risk. Uh, we have Action 31 on building national capacity on MRE. Action 32 on reporting MRE programs in the Article 7. And we added here Action 24 to make sure that we also include details for context specific MRE in affected communities to the extension request to whom uh, requesting that. Um, so in the side event today, excellencies and colleagues, uh, we will feature on how these accent points have been or will be upheld in the country and what are the consequences of implementing EORE program activities in time of pandemic we also would like to know more about how these consequences have been addressed, what solutions have been identified along the way, and whether EORE and COVID-19 risk education efforts have been integrated in the country, and so how it's uh, been done. So after the presentation, we will then um, have breakout group discussion and then plenary discussion to um, hear on some provoking thought. Um, next, we include all of these uh, key references that we may refer to. Ux will go through on um, some key references here later on. Uh, we will share also with you after the site event. So I think that's more, of, more or less from me. And without further ado, I think I would like to invite uh, Lieutenant Chitibun to then share how the Thailand's experiences. Well, good evening from Thailand, everyone. Again, uh, my name is uh, Flight Lieutenant Chody Boon and Gunwanit from Thailand Mind Action Center. And today I am tasked to discuss briefly about the uh, TMAC MRE effort during the COVID-19. So I think the, uh, the effect of the COVID-19 has been uh, imminent on our on the uh, Thailand's my action activities. This pretty much limited the travel for operational oversight as well as the quality management. And uh, some of our uh, activities like the International Day for My Awareness has to be canceled and uh, done through other means like social media. However, the mind risk education and victim assistance seems to be uh, the most uh, restricted activities as they include a lot of face-to-face -face and uh, the travel were restricted. So we are, so with the situation, uh, TMAC knew that uh, we are running the risk of reduced co coverage during the COVID-19 and we also have to come up with a solution, but we also aware that during the rainy season, the 
there is more chance. Uh, there are more chance for the people to wander into the forest to seek the valuable goods, um, which increase the risk of um, which in increase the risk of uh, accident. Some of the uh, for a uh, value mushroom can go up to 20 USD per kilogram, which can supplement um, a lot of villagers and families. Usually TMAC can uh, deploy the team and inform the villagers to not go into the area or at least uh, be careful about it. But during the COVID-19, uh, the travel and the deployment of the team were restricted to prevent uh, COVID-19 spread. Therefore, TMAC uh, has to look for an alternative, which uh, we came up uh, with. The with uh, the alternative that we came up with was the village health volunteer. The village health volunteer was established back in 1997, uh, 1977, which the with the aim to help the people in the rural area to promote the. Uh, healthy behavioral change and also to understand the basic health, uh, basic health care. Each of the team will be responsible for daily inspection of 10 to 15 households. Thus, team I believe the VHB can become crucial as they are very close to the community and they can help stop the COVID-19 spread and we see that we may uh, be able to uh, have the MRE role for them to play. So initially, the, uh, the TMAC will select the area heavily affected by landmines to ensure the coverage. And then the humanitarian mine action unit will approach the village health volunteer and coordinate with them as well as instruct them on the basic MRE so they can go and inform the people during their daily health, uh, daily health inspection and screening. And also, if possible, the TMAC will also have the local staff in their area to accompany the VHB as well as uh, assist them during their health inspection routine. So this, this, uh, help, this helps fix the problem of TMAC not able to travel to the area by using the people who are actually in the area and also help to contain the spread of the, uh, the COVID-19 without putting much more burden on the existing mechanism. And so far TMAC found that it works well and the village health volunteer are more than willing to help, especially when they understand that, you know, what landmines can, uh, can do to people. And also we found that some of the village health volunteer will also participate in the uh, MRE training con conducted by uh, TMAC. Also, we started putting up the mine signs at the health checkpoint where uh, the area is affected by landmines and also conduct the MRE activity at the checkpoint where possible. This also uh, help raise the awareness uh, of the landmines in the area for both people who, in the air, who are in the area and also for the people who may be traveling through during the COVID-19 situation. Again, without putting much more burden on the existing mechanism without adding um, another mechanism to the, uh, to the existing one. Okay. Of course, we also use the uh, traditional means to ensure that the, uh, the MIE message can still sp spread. Like on the left side, the community leaders and the Humanitarian Mine Action Unit or the TMAC operators help broadcast the MRE messages to the local radio broadcasts, which uh, also help uh, spread the MRE message during the time where, when the travel uh, restriction uh, is basically imminent. And from time to time, the, uh, we will find, again, we will find the village health volunteer personnel who, uh, who already undergone the MRE training and sometimes they can do the 
basic standalone MIE training as well. So TMAC is looking at the village health volunteer as the, uh, as the, maybe as the future partner in the mine risk education as we have this village health volunteer spread all over the country. TMAC can help pick and choose, um, you know, the VHB in the affected areas. Well, of course, these efforts are part of following the uh, Oslo action plans where we integrate uh, the MRE program with other ongoing program, especially during the time of uh, uh, COVID-19, accounting for the, uh, the dangers faced by the, uh, the communities. And also this ensures that uh, the capacity of the mind risk education um, can spread and not only team can do it, but also other sector can help uh, implementing uh, the MRE as well, which can help increase the uh, coverage for the maximum result and also help, um, and also doing this without much more added uh, cost or the use of resource. And of course, this information will be shared through the uh, Article 7 report of the, uh, for the convention as well. Um, so uh, anyone interested can go look at the uh, Article 7 um, transparency report um, because uh, Thailand also put a lot uh, more detail of uh, what we do in there. Yeah, that would be uh, the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty for the great presentation. Uh, it's good to hear that um, it's also been shared with, um, with say, parties and other partners in the Article 7. Um, but I think without further ado, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Khalid to present on Libya's perspective. First of all, hi everyone. So uh, I will start with, uh, I'm Carl Del Wada, we had the head of uh, risk education uh, department in uh, the BMI Action uh, Center. Uh, I will move to the next slide, please. As, as a BMI Action Center, as, uh, we have, uh, we ha we have uh, uh, comprehensive uh, vision that said, uh, toward Libya fr uh, free of uh, mind, ARW threat. We are the communities and individuals living in safe and protective environment and in, in ensuring the victims' rights of rehabilitation and <coughs> reintegration into the societies. That our, that our vision, uh, all activity, all risk education, we go through that, uh, this uh, vision by LIPMAC. So here we can uh, to show you the Libmac where is, uh, sorry, here we can to show you the Libya where it are located in the, in the world. So before we, 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 before we talk about uh, risk education uh, in time and uh, COVID-19 in 2020, just uh, I need to talk a, li a little bit about uh, risk education activity in 2019. First of all, we need to talk about the <clears throat> International Awareness Day in Tripoli. Uh, we we prepared that uh, that day in uh, our office in uh, Tripoli, and we invite all international uh, partner and national partner, even for uh, French embassy. If you can see the the other uh, photo is be below here, and that that. They, we 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 put one message. It's called uh, "Together Against Mine." Another activity: make a cooperation with ONMAS, UNICEF for support risk education material for IDBs. It's called "Internal Displaced Person from co uh, Conflict in Tripoli." Uh, Tripoli, uh, Tripoli last year has the conflict and it took uh, one year. So there's a lot of uh, families moved from the conflict area to other area. So then uh, the other activity is scale up with direct community and the schools beside URRE intervention across uh, Libya for children and uh, uh, adults 
with UNICEF, with other NGOs. They are uh, accredited by LibMAC. We use it uh, also for uh, risk education by media, it's called indirect. The, the, third, the third point of uh, implementation of uh, the set training, we, we, we do uh, several uh, training here in Libya with uh, our partners, uh, if the international or local uh, uh, NGOs, as like uh, here, Freefield uh, Foundation is called the TRIF, with UNICEF RE or community mobilizer across uh, organization and partner of the, it's not here, sorry, it's just about that. Okay, we, we, we did uh, uh, several uh, training with international and national uh, organization for risk education, like how, how to, to deliver the message for, to the, the community. Beside, beside the, all the activity, we have here we can to see the, the beneficiary in 2019, and uh, they distribute around uh, Libya from the east and south and the west. And you can to see the, the, the number of direct beneficiary, like uh, 52,000, and indirect, like in 771,000. Uh, now we can to talk about uh, the risk education uh, in time of COVID-19. As, as you see, in, in Libya, Libya in uh, the, the first quarter of uh, 2020, they, they, they did it impact by COVID-19. So we keep continuing the same, the same activity, uh, direct activity, direct message for schools, for kids. Uh, of course, we, we cooperation with the UNICEF and TRIF and other NGOs. So in the first quarter, we reached over 18,000 children. They, they access the, the message and uh, I can it. included uh, the York Emergency Relief uh, Distribution, uh, RRM. This, this team is called the Robot uh, Response uh, Mechanism. This team like the support the IDBs by like food and other items. So we, we train them and just to, to help us to deliver the message to the community. The, 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 second, the second point, implementation uh, or RE activity in uh, Nafusa Mountain or uh, Jabal Nafusa, it's called uh, West of uh, the Tripoli and other city in Tripoli, sorry, by TRIF, as well as Eastern Libya, like Benghazi and uh, Darna by DCA, DGG, TRIF, and UNICEF. That's what happened in the, in the first quarter. Then from March and June 2020 or 2020, in the time COVID-19, here we have a center, it's called National Center for Disease Control. He announcement we have cases, cases by COVID-19. So we try to, to find another way to access to the community and uh, give them the message, uh, safety message. So, we 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 designed we designed a poster or sticker, uh, between COVID-19 and AR uh, risk education key messages. If I need to share a video again, if you can to see that poster, is it clear? Well, same thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, sticker is uh, complete between uh, two two different messages between COVID nineteen and to come with the uh, EOR risk education. We finalize it with the uh, UNICEF and TRIF and start to distribute it for all uh, all the, the beneficiary or uh, the community. Uh, the second point is scale up the uh, risk education through the social media, radio, or TV. Uh, increase the installation of uh, billboards because before uh, before that before the COVID nineteen we we still we stole uh, the the billboard but now we need to keep folks for more more than before because now we can't like we can't to to deliver the message face to face so that's why we need to find another way to uh, to uh, to access to the community the the last the last uh, point. As a result, this, uh, this distributed and uh, outreach through, uh, through the COVID-19. Risk education uh, message 
and increased the, the reported of explosive hazard through the virus hotline or resist. Because the hour, the conflict is uh, finished uh, this year and uh, last, last May, so many, many people try to come back. So we, we go, we going and we try to deal with them and uh, giving them message, don't touch, please call us. So we, uh, we receive many, many reporting about that. Here, here just we need to uh, talk to a little bit about uh, challenges, a little bit challenges from the time of COVID-19. Since the end of May 2020, the number of civilian accidents related to explosive artists increased during IDB returning, uh, return to their homes in South of Tripoli. As I mentioned, after the finished the conflict, there's many people try to go home so as a consequence, uh, a risk education campaign uh, to try like give more, more, more uh, messages for, for them. There is a, the, the, the good point here, the result of no, a number of uh, uh, incidents has decreased in the past weeks. That's the, the good point. Yeah, next slide, next slide please. As a LibMac with our uh, partner here in Libya, we, we have uh, uh, several of, uh, challenges. It's not like, uh, of course, we, we have the, the, the global issue or global strug uh, struggle of COVID-19. But in Libya, we have another uh, issue like COVID-19 beside uh, some some, sometimes there is a conflict here and there in, internal conflict. So that's, that's good. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not easy like to access to, to the community to deliver the message. Also that's the second point, as I mentioned, the access and mobility, like the team, like is not, uh, not easy to move the from uh, city to other city because sometimes a uh, security issue like take control. So that's our uh, challenges. In the end, yes, I want to, I would like to thank you all the partner, all the donor to uh, support uh, ILIPMAT and support NGOs to keep going for risk education and other uh, activity, mine action activity. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Khalid. Um, it's also good to learn how Libya addressed the challenges in implementing these um, accent points as well. So I think to shorten the time, I'm just going to invite Bong Seng from CMAA to present. Uh, we will share the, the presentation um, our site. And please let me invite um, Bong Seng. Hello. So it is again, I uh, would like to thank the Mark and team for this e very important event. And to start my presentation, I would like to share with you the brief information on my race education in general in Cambodia. I mean, the my race education uh, continue to play a very important role in delivering key mind race education messages to landmine and EOW affected community to prevent accident and injury from mine and EOW and support mine prevent operation to ensure that affected population um, understand about the importance of mine marking sign and clearance. Um, site and areas suspected to be mine and EOW uh, contamination. Um, EO, EORE have been operating in Cambodia for nearly 30 years already uh, by the government and non-governmental organization. In the Cambodian National Mine Action Strategy um, 2018 to 2025, MRE has been stipulated in goal four at the objective one, provide effective mind race education uh, 
and risk reduction to affected population, including during human-made and natural disaster emergency. In order to facilitate the achievement of the NMA, and I think that uh, some key policies and standard document have been uh, developed um, and approved by government for a more operator uh, implementation. So a more technical different group, and this document can be, uh, you know, facilitate the implementations of Oslo action plan. So technical reference group and other coordination mechanism has been established under the leadership and coordinations of CMA. The purpose of reference group is to coordinate um, MOE planning, standardize MOE messages, licensing and accreditation of MOE agencies, and monitor the implementations of MOE activities in Cambodia. And CMA has also established the uh, National Action Plan with the prioritization of the targeted group and targeted area. And this prioritization has been developed with the discussion, with the participation of the technical region group member. And based on the uh, data, uh, victim data collected by CMA and prioritized area by CMA. And also at the time being, uh, Genesis is supporting CMA to commission an evaluation of mind race education program in Cambodia. Uh, the evaluation has four main objectives as one, to assess the impact of MOE activity to date, including the, the identification of the enabling factor, barrier, and bottleneck, and reconstruct a theory of change. And the second one is to review what type of MOE are most suitable and most effective in various contexts in Cambodia. And the third one is to access the support provided by national entity, I mean, to, to strengthen the uh, national uh, entity for MOE integration and provide recommendation for MOE sector in developing and implementing an MOE transition plan to promote national government ownership greater accountability and long-term sustainability. And the last one is to document, lesson learn, and good uh, uh, lesson learn and good practices and innovation that can be informed uh, the review of current natures of MOE uh, strategy. So this evaluation is very important and will be a good opportunity for, uh, to, an, to uh, analyze the progress against the NMAS plan result for 2010-2019 uh, and the evaluation will inform us how to adjust different MOE approaches to reflect the new nature of landmine and ERW accident situation and to inform uh, our and must for, you know, to develop and to uh, strengthen our national you know, entity for providing mind education in Cambodia. So mind education plays a very important role in Cambodia. Uh, a great achievement have been made over this year. But unfortunately, the world is now facing with the outbreak of COVID-19. And Cambodia is no exception. So as a result of the outbreak, MOE program through school, curriculum, and child-to-child -child mind education at community have been stopped 
due to school closures and physical distancing uh, requirement. So in order to address the impacts of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you know, MOE staff and network have been prepared on COVID-19 safety procedure and protocol. So as I mentioned that even the some MOE program have been suspended. So it is very important for CMA to continue uh, mind-based education activity uh, to maintain uh, mind-based education activity in order to provide you know, extra efforts and measure to ensure that they are safe and necessary services are provided to them. Um, therefore, key messages and poster on COVID-19 prevention and hand washings that have been endorsed uh, by the Ministry of Health, I think, have been uh, supported to MOE operator so that they can provide or they can integrate it as a part of uh, mind risk education activity. And CMAA uh, has a strong commitment to, with the government of Cambodia to fight against the outbreak of COVID-19 in the community. And now CMAA is actively uh, cooperating with different with the development partner. Uh, and also CMAA uh, uh, encouraged all MOE operator to integrate COVID-19 prevention messages in uh, their annual, in their activity, in their work plan. Um, as a result, COVID-19 and MOE poster have been developed and printed for posted in the community. Here. Uh, for future plan, uh, as you know, the face-to-face risk education activity have been stopped, have been suspended. Therefore, the standalone risk education messages through poster and billboard, mass media and TV spot and radio um, are very important. And CMAA will continue uh, MOE activity and continue encouraging all MOE operator to, you know, integrate to and staff and network uh, continue to be prepared to integrate the MOE uh, COVID-19 with the MOE program. Okay. That that is the end of my presentation. And if you have any question, please press. Thank you. Thank you, Bong Seng. Um, I think before we actually go to the burning question, I would like to invite uh, my colleague Boots to give a brief presentation on some key references. Over to you, Boots. Yes. Thank you, Dwi, and thanks everyone, uh, all the panelists. Uh, thanks all um, colleagues, uh, friends for, for participating in this webinar. Um, I will try to share my screen uh, unless um, I see. Okay, let me try to share my screen. I have only two slides. Um, and I suggest that we. Um, do we, I suggest that for the burning questions, we keep them for the chat box. So uh, then we save time for the discussion, if this is fine with you. Yeah, that works. So um, I will have only two slides here. Um, and again, it, this is to save time for the, for the discussion, for the interaction. But first, I want, I want just to um, congratu congratulate uh, the three speakers who, who presented their situation in Thailand, in Libya, and in Cambodia. This is, it's amazing to see how national authorities, 
um, have been able to adapt their programming um, and keep uh, high standards for, for risk education. It's really uh, um, very encouraging for, for, for the entire sector to see how you are dealing with this issue, your flexibility, your agility uh, to adapt your processes and make sure that uh, affected communities receive not only EORE, but also a, a COVID risk education or other COVID related activities. So that's really inspiring, I think, for, for many of us. Hence the, the importance of, of sharing those experience with, with, with everyone. Um, my two slides are actually um, about, few, about a kind of toolbox that we have uh, prepared and that is at the disposal of the entire sector. But first, in this slide, you, you see that we have we are actually facing three main scenarios in a, in our sector. Uh, the first scenario is uh, uh, countries dealing with um, trying to deal with uh, EORE uh, and safely maintain EORE by all means. Uh, this means mainly shifting from face-to-face -face activities to uh, remote activities and, and digital activities. Uh, but that's one key scenario that we, we are seeing. Uh, and when they are face-to-face -face, uh, activities, making sure they are totally safe. Uh, the second scenario that is, of course, um, happening these days, as we can see with, with the examples from the national authorities, is that we have in, in increasingly integration of EORE and COVID risk education activities. Um, this is a trend that will continue as we see that there are countries where the situation is um, even um, worsening in terms of, of COVID. So this is uh, of course something that we want to promote the integration of both activities. In some uh, for some organizations, for some countries, or some programs, even EORE uh, may be replaced by COVID risk education activities. So we have seen also some examples. And of course, there could be a combination of the three uh, scenarios in, in, in many countries. So these are basically the, the key scenarios. To address all these uh, scenarios, we, we, as I said, we developed a kind of toolbox together with uh, all the partners from the, from the community, especially the EOR, EORE advisory group. Um, and I want just to highlight the tools that, that are at your disposal. Uh, the first one is a community of practice. This is called the International MRE Working Group. Uh, we have more than 400 members and everyone is welcome to, to be part of this uh, community. So this is um, um, an, a forum where we can have horizontal exchange from country to country, from um, uh, organization to organizations, uh, from individual to individual. It's, it's, it's designed for that and to promote knowledge exchange and sharing lessons learned and, and best practices. We organized a number of webinars. I don't need to go into the details, but we, we have had an RMAC webinar a few weeks ago, three months ago, we organized, that was on 1st April, we organized a, a webinar with 47 countries and 28 organizations. So all these webinars are at your disposal and they have their own um, um, Q&A and other documents. Then there is a resource library um, that is at your, at your disposal. I will come to this in a minute. Uh, and we have also a Q&A, a Q&A that was specifically designed for the sector. It's a 15 page guidance document on how we can adapt our activities and how we can address uh, some uh, COVID risk education activities. It's specifically designed for, for the EORE sector. So I will just try to, um, I will try to show you um, very briefly without, uh, taking too much time, I want to show you now um, how the resource library looks like. I guess you all can see the screen is a little bit small, but uh, when, you, when you open this link with the resource library, you have um, uh, on top of it a folder with key links, uh, a folder with webinars, 
uh, you have examples of integrated EORE. We don't have so many examples, so we, are, we welcome more examples from all of you. Uh, but for example, you will see very nice tools developed by Palestine or Libya, for example. Um, we have a, a folder on resource for uh, remote EORE uh, with guidance on uh, how, how to address EORE um, through a non-face-to-face -face approach, um, etc. I, I won't go through all of them. I just want to highlight the last one, which is a new one. It's still empty now, but uh, we'll fill out this, this um, um, folder in the coming days. RCCE, as Dwi mentioned, this is risk, risk communication and community engagement. And actually, EORE, Mind Risk Education, is part of the RCCE sector, the very broad RCCE sector that could be related to health, um, to nutrition, to wash, water and sanitation, uh, to road traffic incident, whatever. So risk communication and, and community engagement is a broader sector and we need to learn from this sector. And um, I will share with you uh, um, uh, through this uh, resource library, a very, um, a very large package of information on how we can measure uh, our reach uh, how we can measure the impact uh, of our activities during the COVID uh, situation. There have been a, a few webinars organized over the last weeks from the RCCE sector, and we'll share that with you. Uh, that is all about the metrics, how we can measure um, the effect, the output, the, even the outcome of our activities, how we measure that, how we avoid double counting, what are impressions versus um, uh, reach, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm a bit digressing here, but this is just to showcase that you have uh, this toolbox and this resource library at your disposal. So over to you, uh, Dewey. I think I'm done with with this, and uh, we can move. I suggest we move to the discussion part uh, and keep the 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 question for the. Um, for the chat if we want to save time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Uk. Um, I think we have about 30 minutes to go through discussion. So we have one question about the, um, about how has the, how has each organization and country implemented uh, or plan to implement action points 28, 32. We hear that for uh, from time to time, and um, my colleague Kathleen will divide us into smaller groups. So you will probably see a prompt to join a breakout room. We will have about 15 minutes given the current time available. Um, so you can just click join breakout room. And there is also a trigger of time. Um, if you don't click it, you will be automatically come into this uh, randomized uh, group anyway. So if you need any help, click the question mark at the bottom of the screen and our colleague Kathleen will be coming over. So we have uh, several facilitators that are kindly um, to help us in this group. And I think after 15 minutes, then we will go back to the plenary and have more discussion on um, overall the breakout group discussion. So if you have any burning questions, as Uke's already mentioned, please do feel free to drop the questions in the chat box. We will address that afterwards. If not in this um, side event, then we will address that after the side event. So over to you, Kathleen, to manage the breakout group, please. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, in our group, we were hearing um, more from GICHD plan on online training, but I think we can elaborate more in the plenary. Um, I see Uks coming, more people coming back. Um, I hope you had a good group discussion. Uks, do you want to carry it from here? Yes, Dwi, thanks. Um, that was, I think, a, a, a productive discussion from our side uh, in group two. I think we have um, a, a, a large number of groups 
uh, how many actually do we have? Did we have uh, six or seven groups? Eight. Eight. Eight groups. Thanks, Caitlin. So we, I think it might not be possible to go through um, a wrap up through a summary of, of of the outcome of the discussion of each of the eight groups. Um, so I would like because we have like actually uh, just few minutes left. So um, those who who facilitated the, the the group discussion and those who participated, uh, would you like to to raise a, a point, a burning issue? Uh, something you think you should be shared with everyone that is worth to share with everyone uh, in a just um, in a brief manner would you like to share anything the floor is yours you can you can um, take the floor you unmute yourself or you just um, highlight your point in the chat I can start it then, I guess, from here, if that's okay. Please go ahead, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so we were kind of, um, when we listening from Valent, um, Chief of Program in GICSG, it was very interesting that um, GICSG now is working with EOR advisory group on the online um, training, capacity building part. So I think we can probably have Valent to, to explain more about that later on. But it was a couple of things that is very interesting also coming from um, Iraq. Our group was Middle East group, more or less. Um, we, have, uh, we have from ICRC and uh, Mag Unmas as well that is working in Iraq. So um, they had Facebook ad uh, uh, as a pilot project even before uh, COVID-19. And the, the aim was also to target some group that are not um, accessible, and now uh, I believe that along the way in in the in the COVID um, nineteen situation right now, it is a lot more um, useful. Um, I think that's thought that is quite provoking during our discussion. Um, there are also some media campaign also been done as well uh, by Mas. So that's more or less from our. Middle East group slash GSG as well. Thanks. Thank you, Dewey. That's a, a very good summary. Anyone else would like to take the floor to speak up on on this uh, on on your um, on the, the discussion you had with your uh, colleagues partners. Belinda, you were, you were in my group. Would you like to say a few words about forced, forced change? Yeah, I'm interested, um, I'm interested in what we were forced to change um, due to COVID um, and what, um, so innovations and things we've been forced to change that we will now keep. As um, examples from Iraq wasn't necessarily forced change, but they've, rem they've been working more with remotely through other partners, um, from my monitoring work, I can see that that's been happening more in Myanmar and countries. Um, and, um, then, and then there's also the a really good example from Vietnam that Mesa highlighted, um, CRS in Vietnam. Um, um, they gave a good example on the application that was developed for children. It was developed before the uh, crisis, um, but it was used uh, for parents and children, and it was actually integrated into the school's home online learning um, um, during the crisis. And, you know, so that, that's something that change has happened and been sort of forced to happen, but they're good things that we can continue forward. Um, that was my area of interest mm -hmm. in particular, I think. So we had some really good yeah. examples in our group and um, the Vietnamese uh, example from CRS is in English too and um, Nguyen said she'd happily share it and so that's good and I'm sure there are other good examples from other groups. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Belinda. I think that was a uh, uh, yes very interesting to, to, to have those examples from, from uh, Vietnam, from MAG as well, uh, the approach of MAG on, on this issue and on forced change um, the last point I made in my, in my short presentation about um, uh, how to measure uh, the impact of our activities or the effect of ac activities, um, we are 
uh, from a, I would say from a UNICEF perspective, uh, we are forced to uh, explore how other sectors are dealing with uh, RCCE, risk communication and, and community engagement. So this is um, an example of forced change that I think will have a long-term effect. Uh, it's, it's, it's not only about using digital approaches, etc. It's also even about uh, measuring our activities in, a, in an emergency context. So this is a, a set of, 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 of uh, tools that um, we need to explore uh, that are out of the mine action box, the traditional mine action or the traditional risk education box. And that's, uh, I think, a very positive force change. Anyone else would like to, to make a, a, a final point uh, from your group discussion before we wrap up the, the entire session? Hi, Hug. Uh, Milena. Milena, yes. From Go ahead, Milena. Uh, Mag. Uh, we had very interesting discussions in our group, but I wanted to outline uh, two things. Uh, in terms of integration, we had the example from UNMAS with all the humanitarian action plan meeting like protection, education clusters, and working together towards uh, the integration of EORE. In terms of context specific, we had quite good examples, both to try and reach uh, the most at risk, but also uh, to adapt with new tools like the risk education talking device in Somalia. Um, in terms of prioritization, a lot of barriers and challenging to reach the, reach the most at risk when we cannot deploy the teams. When we need to go through social media, through calls, Sometimes they don't have access to all these means. Um, in terms of capacity building, um, always outlining, like they did in the previous presentation, the strength of having community focal points or any link in the community that can support uh, with uh, spreading risk education messages and continuing this link with the community when we cannot uh, access to them due to the limitations uh, during the pandemic, and um, I think that's more or less quick summary, not to take more time, but like, thank you for the group and uh, the interesting inputs. Excellent, Milena. Thanks for, for this uh, uh, perspective. I think, Ruth, uh, you wanted to take the floor as well, and I think you will be the, you may be the last speaker. Um, Ruth, would you, want, you, would you like to share a few things with the group? Yeah, thank you, Hu. I, um, we had Libmac in our group, and again, so we had an interesting discussion around what they've been doing based on the presentation. But one of um, the questions I think that they were asking was in terms of, um, you know, what is a good way to um, build capacity with partners who perhaps are not um, from the mine action sector who could help to deliver risk education and COVID messages in the future. So I know that today we heard from um, TMAC about how they're working with the village health volunteers, but it might be interesting amongst the um, community of practice to share some ideas around um, developing capacity of partners also in a fairly short time frame to enable them to uh, deliver messages. Um, we also had some interesting inputs from work happening in Nigeria, um, which included a lot of uh, online and remote work um, with risk education talking devices um, to provide risk education messages. Um, and also looking at the development of um, a distance learning program. I think those were the, the key points and maybe some of the, my colleagues who were in that group will elaborate on that within the messages. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Ruth. I think um, uh, we should, um, I'm conscious of time, so we should uh, conclude the, this uh, session. Um, before I conclude, uh, Dwi, do you want to say anything, or Caitlin, do you want to say anything? 
Thank you. Yes, briefly. Um, I guess thank you all so much for joining us today. And we would see more about um, you know, using any platforms that we can use during this situation particularly. Um, again, thank you. Over to you. Thank you so much, Dwi, uh, for your leadership and for hosting this event in a, such a professional way. Uh, it's always a pleasure to work with Armac and also thank for the great webinar you organized a few weeks ago. Uh, Caitlin, would you like to add anything? Just to add a note, I've written this in the chat, but if um, anyone else wants to share anything that was interesting, thought provoking from your discussions, feel free to send it to us via email. I've provided mine in the chat. I think you also have yours in the intersessional program and we're happy to include that, uh, what you send to us in a report that we'll be writing up on this. Thank you so much, Caitlin, um, who uh, actually ensured the whole, all the technical aspect of this, uh, of this um, webinar, so thank, I mean, this side event. So thanks a lot, Caitlin. Um, I want to maybe, I, I won't summarize all the discussion we had, but um, I think in, um, in this um, session, uh, we have been able to to see uh, how the, the the sector has been able to adapt and to even reimagine uh, the way we work. Uh, it's really um, uh, we talk a lot about innovation. It's it's the, as, and we we'll talk about uh, forced change. That was Belinda's point. I think this is very uh, relevant, uh, and uh, it's a positive side effect of the COVID that uh, pushed us to to even uh, improve the way we we uh, deliver uh, the the way we can be effective for risk education. I think, as I said, the three examples we we had from TMAC, from LIDMAC, uh, and from the um, Cambodian Mine Action Authority were, as I said, very inspiring. Um, I, I, I am impressed about um, uh, even uh, how Libya is dealing with this issue uh, that may, maybe was not raised in the plenary, uh, but um, in the, they have an hotline um, and they have seen a spike in terms of hotline, uh, in terms of how to address uh, um, the, the issue of IDs and also devices. So they had like 700 calls in just a few weeks uh, in this uh, specific outline and that they saw they have seen a correlation between risk education and the number the spike in terms of people calling this uh, hotline um, and and for actually IED disposal or, or explosive owners disposal so this is a, a very a very strong example that I, I will remember from Libya um, I think also um, um, from the Cambodian Mine Action Authority, I'm impressed by the fact that you are using a prioritization mechanism, uh, that you um, have a theory of change for, for, for your current response. So this is very uh, inspiring. And the same from um, the, the Thai, uh, Thailand Mine Action Center, uh, the village help volunteers, the way you you reactivated uh, this group or the way you promoted the, the work of this village help volunteers is, is very um, interesting. Um, the way also you work in checkpoints, uh, that all these examples should be, should be shared with everyone. So let's um, make sure the whole, the whole um, sector will contribute through this resource library. So please feel free to share with us. Uh, any lessons learned, any, um, also any question you may have. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a package for this webinar that will include a QA. and uh, I think it's, it's doable. Uh, my final point is to um, remind everyone that this action plan, this Oslo action plan is a framework. It's a roadmap for, uh, for the next, actually the next five years uh, that will help guide uh, the work in our sector. Uh, including for non-state parties, they, we can use these as a, as a roadmap. And these five plus one action points um, are actually all related to indicators in the Oslo Action Plan. 
So there's an, a kind of accountability towards those, those actions. So let's promote uh, all together these actions uh, towards our organization, towards our, our national authorities, our partners, our donors. Uh, that's the purpose of this webinar as well, to, to promote those, those action points. As we speak, they, they, they was, there is a preparation of the next meeting of the CCM, the Convention on Cluster Munition, and they are also um, preparing a, an action plan for the CCM, for the Cluster, the cluster Munition Convention. Uh, and this action plan, the Lausanne Action Plan, will have also specific points um, on uh, EORE, and uh, that will be the first time as well. And again, that will guide the work of the um, uh, CCM state parties and observers for the next five years. So let's promote those action points. And my final word will go to our three uh, panelists uh, from Libya, Thailand, uh, I mean, Shotubon from Thailand, uh, Khaled uh, from um, Libya, um, and Dara Seng from Cambodia. So thanks a lot for sharing all your expertise and lessons learned with all of us. We learned a lot. Dwi, uh, many thanks for hosting this event. Uh, I think we can say we are over now. And I, last point, uh, in just uh, 20 minutes, the intersessional will resume. The plenary session will resume. So if you would like to join the intersessional, um, and uh, you plan to do that, you have a 20-minute break before it's resumed. Am I right, Dwi? Yeah, um, a bit lesser than 20 minutes, but yeah, it's going to start at 3 o'clock, Geneva okay. time. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank, you. You, so Thank much. you so much. Many thanks, everyone, for your participation. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.